Good afternoon and welcome to the 10th video in this OS FF240 Pegasus um, engine servicing series. This is JP's engine here and this video is primarily for JP and hopefully I'm going to keep it fairly short. Basically what I'm just going to show you is all the new parts have arrived, they're here, and I'll talk a little bit about the order of operation of reassembling this, but I want to, you know, I want to show, show the parts. So what I've got here is just a, a block that I got you know, from Lowe's. It's a hardwood block, and I just drilled a hole in it, and I'll talk about why I have that here in a second. But here's all the parts that <clears throat> represent the next, the next segment of this reassembly now and these are the connecting rods all brand new connecting rods that uh, just came in from Japan today they came from RC Japan so I highly recommend if you have uh, parts that you need for OS engines if you can't find them locally I would highly recommend going to RC Japan and ordering them from them um, I'm not certain I haven't ever try to order parts for Sato engines there, but they might have Sato engine parts there. I don't know, all I know is they do have OS parts. These are the new connecting rods, and as you can see here, it says OS FT-122, which means the second generation, um, and 160. So, I got four connecting rods here, which is awesome. And now, I have, talk about the bearings here. Um, so, the Horizon Hobbies site has, if you go and look at the Pegasus, the 320 Pegasus engine, and you look for optional parts or spare parts or whatever they call it, they have a listing of parts that are still available for those engines. However, and they have, uh, I think, two or three bearings listed too. Um, it's just confusing as hell because they'll list like this bearing is a mid bearing or something because it's used for various different things and they don't show you this information on the website it just shows it doesn't even show you this part number it it has some other part number that horizon has created and it just has that part number and says mid bearing and it's like and it has no dimensions so it's like well, what the hell is this bearing what's it for so what I ended up having to do to find out to make sure that this part from Horizon Hobbies was the correct bearing was in the parts list, the exploded parts breakdown in the parts list for the 320 Pegasus engine, I typed in this number where I looked, I looked up the bearing that I needed. And what I did was I did a search. I just put OSM, the letters OSM in front of this number and use the I think I even used the terminology here crankshaft ball bearing and just did a Google search and of course it came up with um, well it came up with <clears throat> excuse me a main hobbies and a main hobbies is a great resource I'm not sure they're a great resource to buy things from but they have a they're a great resource because they have things listed with the OS part number but then it also said mid bearing or whatever horizons description was so I was like ah you know why it says that because they get their bearings from horizon they get their OS parts from horizon and then they sell them so I used a main hobbies website to cross-reference and make sure I was getting the right bearing long long explanation for trying to figure out what the hell the bearing is the other thing I figured out that I could do which I had forgotten is go and look at the RC modeler reviews anytime Clarence Lee does a review he would he would uh, disassemble the engine and he'd tell you the size of the bearings so he could at least you know you can at least get some help there so anyway finding bearings for this engine wasn't really easy and i knew it wasn't going to be easy because it wasn't easy with the pegasus engine because um Boca bearings is just out in the weeds they don't have a freaking clue but anyway so that's the mid bearing which is the bearing that goes they call it no i'm sorry that's not the mid bearing this is they call it the front bearing i guess that bearing is the bearing that goes in here but then they didn't make any reference to the bearing that goes here so there's actually two front bearings in my opinion so this is the bearing that goes in this front housing and this bearing i don't have the uh the back the rear cover this is the bearing that goes here on the rear cover 
Um, so that's the rear cover bearing. I got that one out. That one was kind of notchy feeling. So and this one, I just look at this package. I found this on eBay. I just happened to be searching for OSM and this part number and a hit came up on eBay. So it's not like this is commonly available because this is not, I don't believe this is one of the uh, bearings that's commonly available on Horizon site. So I just got lucky and I found this bearing. So I got that bearing. <clears throat> the other bearings I got from my buddy Brant on eBay. He's got an eBay store there and I've been buying bearings from him for years and I love his bearings. And I got these bearings. So here's the front the other front housing bearing which just turns out to be is an R6 and then I got these bearings here which are the the crankshaft bearings I think these are the ones Horizon was saying was calling mid bearing I, I think I'm not sure now I don't remember but this is our nice new crankshaft bearing one of three and uh, and I took it out already just to, and slid it on there just to make sure the only bearing that I am not replacing is the one that was in the front here and it's this one here and the reason I'm not replacing it is because it's perfect and I was going back and looking at some of my other videos for the 320 and I had the same thing that came up all the all bearings in the engine need to be replaced except this one so I was like okay well this one feels perfect it makes no noise it's smooth as silk it feels brand new so I'm not gonna replace that bearing so uh, that's that now, so I can show you this. This, one of these bearings will go on the back of here. I don't want to put it on there right now. I need to oil it up a little bit. Hopefully I can get it off. Oh yeah, there we go. But then I'll take this apart. So what's gonna happen here is these just slide right. Now look at this. Look how beautiful this is. I got this thing cleaned up really nice and it just slides right in place there. Then you got your collar or your uh, your joiner, uh, connecting rod joiner. And I would put another bearing here and then just assemble this thing. So what's going to happen is I'll put another bearing on there. I'll put the other bearing here. What's going to happen is the next order of operations is slide the three main bearings on the crankshaft, which I kind of partially did. And then I've got a cheat sheet here because I wrote these down for JP. And then I'm going to go out and I'm going to install the front housing bearings. Now that's where this block here comes into play is <laughs> Sasha just did a somersault off a box. Um, so I put a hole, I drilled a hole in here for this front end here. So it's just it's just big enough so that I can put this thing in here and this thing will be supported by nice wood and it'll be flat and I can put it on the arbor press that I just purchased today and I can press this bearing into place. So I'll press both bearings into place, that one and the R6 one in the front. And then what I'm going to do is, and this is something that I did catch on video when I did 320, one of my 320s. Uh, videos uh, one of my 320 engines. I did catch it on video and I'm probably see if I can do the same thing is I don't have a nice wood vise, but I've got a little vise that I can stand this up in. What I'll do is I'll put this assembly here when I've got the other bearings on it. I'll put it in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer for I don't know several hours and get it nice and cold and luckily here in Wisconsin and my garage is not heated I'll have help keeping it cold so I'm going to put this in there nice and cold and then what I'll do is not in this hole, not in this thing, I'll have a little vise. I'll just put this thing in a vise and just lightly hold it in there just enough to hold it in place or maybe I can see if I can find a bit and drill a hole in here and just stick this thing in here. So anyway, this thing is going to be sitting upright and what I'm going to do is just let that sit there and be chilled and I'm going to, with one hand, heat this case up. Get it all nice and hot it'll be all lubed up in there and all kinds of nice oil and it'll be nice and hot and then all i'll do is i'll just slide this thing in place boom i'll just do that and when it gets to a certain point i'll need to tap it with a rubber mallet gently tap it with a rubber mallet and we'll get it seated and we'll have that crankcase installed or the crankshaft installed and then after that i'll put the uh this bearing in the rear cover. I won't set the timing. 
In fact, I don't even need to have that in the rear cover. I'll just put the rear cover on this engine just to hold the, the guts of this in place so that when I go to put this down, so I put the front housing on, I don't get this thing sliding in and out if there's enough play in there. So I'll just put the rear cover on with a couple of screws, four screws, hold it in place, hold everything together, stand it up again, and then I'll just drop this in place on there. And it should be a, a beautiful, nice fit. And it will be because it'll be all lubed up and everything. And then I'll just screw those holes in it, or screw this thing in place. And then once I get to that point, I will bring everything in the house and go through installing the cam, or probably install this bearing out there in the garage also. Install the um, camshaft into the crankcase. And then I will be doing connecting rods. And I'm not really sure I'm super looking forward to doing the connecting rods. They're not necessarily all that fun to install. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's all kind of fun. So this is interesting. I'm just looking at this connecting rod now, and I remember that on the last connecting rods that I did on a uh, 320, I made a note and mentioned it that there was marks on the bottom halves. And well, there are marks on each side that denoted that this end cap went a certain way. I am not seeing those dots. On this now there's an oil hole here for lubrication there's an oil hole in the bottom here but I'm not seeing orientation dots which it doesn't I guess it doesn't really matter maybe it doesn't matter they should be identical anyway but I just recall that the other one did have those things so that's kind of where we stand with this so the next video will be you know, probably me out in the garage and putting putting these bearings or putting the crankshaft into the housing after I put the connecting rods on then I'll install the pistons install the um, sleeves tappets heads and push rods and intake manifold and carb and then set the valve lash so those are the things that I'll be doing here uh, that steps probably in order and I'm not entirely sure uh, JP told me which of these steps he was most interested in seeing videos of um, I might shoot videos of all of it just to have it for you know future reference for me and anybody else that's also interested in that but so that's where we stand with this uh, 240 Pegasus project and stand by for the next few videos coming up <laughs>